Epilogue Six Years Later Year 889 PXF Late Autumn Osman stepped into the cidery of the bustling Milgren's orchard. He had been surprised that this orchard and the surrounding farms had recovered so successfully. So much of Elyon, and especially Arnador, still struggled to return to prosperity even fifteen years after the rebellion. Osman had little information, as distrust of outsiders was still very prevalent. In addition, he was being careful, as while few might remember, he was in breach of his exile by walking these lands. With no truly functional inns or taverns in the region, this cidery might be his only chance to buy some rumors and information. The cidery was newly built, an additional standalone building to the obviously older farmhouse and structures used in the running of the orchard. One of the dozens of workers still harvesting apples from the trees had pointed him to the entrance, and he cautiously stepped inside, not knowing what to expect. He found the cidery well constructed, with care and craftsmanship. It gladdened Osman to see it, and the hope it meant for the future of the lands around his once home. Half a dozen currently unoccupied small tables filled one side of the room, and a long bar dominated the other, along with stacks of cider barrels behind it. An older human woman, nearing or slightly beyond her mid-fifties, was working behind the counter, and another human, with wild cascading hair tied up in a loose tangle on his head, perhaps her son of no more than nineteen years, with back to the main room, assisted her. Osman strode to the bar and laid down a golden Uldani coin. I'll take your best cider, he confidently requested, sliding what must be far more than the payment across to the older barwoman in full offering. She eyed Osman and the coin and nodded to her assistant to draw the cider into a tankard. What is it you want, friend? You are a long way from the Isles. I am looking for someone. An old rumor came to my homeland regarding the last night captain of Arnador. Osman said the last part cautiously, judging the barwoman's reaction. When she gave none, he continued, He would be near your age now, and I have need to find him. Sliding the tankard across to Osman, the woman, wearing the unreadable mask of bartenders and good folk who work the land in all regions, replied, all the traitor duke's guards either died in the revolt or were executed with him. Osman picked up his tankard to drink, and she wiped the bar clean where it had sat. Then, pocketing the coin, she continued, I appreciate your business, but you best be moving along. It will be dark soon, and there are no open beds for you here this night. Osman got the message and drank down the cider in one gulp. He placed the tankard back on the bar and backed away, hands splayed to show he had no ill intention. As he opened the door, feeling there might be more this woman wasn't saying, he looked over his shoulder and said, Well, if he is alive and you see him, tell him his little brother is looking for him, and that he found Riken. The End This has been Legacy of the Vermilion Blade. Written by J. Tallsquall. Narrated by Dan Kaiser. To be continued in Book Two of the A Time of Falcons and Roses series. Promise of the Betrayer's Dagger. <laughs>